Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. My name is Becky and we are out in the garden today. We are gonna spend time planting out a whole lot of, lot of potatoes. We're gonna be planting potatoes three different ways. If you see right here, I have a line right here. The first way we're gonna be doing it today is we're gonna be doing a Ruth Stout no dig potato garden. Last year, I planted my potatoes like this and they did okay. The problem was I did not have an irrigation system set up and I didn't water them all summer and it was the hottest summer we've ever had here, 115 degrees, and they just didn't get very big. We got an okay harvest, you can watch that video, but we can do better this year and I don't think it was the roost out method that was the problem, I think it was the watering that was, a, that was a problem. The next way we're gonna plant some potatoes are in raised beds. I had a record-breaking year the first year I grew potatoes. I grew 150 pounds of potatoes in one 16 by four foot raised bed because it was irrigated and they did fantastic. So we're gonna plant some of the same varieties there. The third way we're gonna be doing it is in some grow bags. These are called root bags and or grow bags and I can link where I got these down in the description box. These are 15 gallon bags and I think this is gonna be a fantastic way to plant potatoes. This is gonna be an experiment year for me with this. So you and I are gonna find out together how well it does. After we get all these potatoes planted, we need to set up our tomato trellises. It is getting very close to planting tomatoes. Uh, we are at about 45 degrees at night. And so it's not gonna be but a week or two and I'm gonna start getting my potatoes in the ground. Excuse me, tomatoes in the ground. So we need to get the trellises set up. After we have fun in the garden, we're gonna head inside. We're gonna make a pound cake for a family dinner tomorrow with some strawberries. We have five different varieties of potatoes. I think we have Butterball, Yukon Gold, Red Potatoes, and these are Huckleberry Potatoes. They're very dark in this bag. And so maybe we don't have five, maybe we have four. So that's what we're gonna be growing this year. Let me show you what I did earlier to prep this bed to get the potatoes planted. And we're gonna plant in here first. Over the winter, wood chips fell into my potato area. I've been building the soil for two years now, and I really don't wanna plant my potatoes in the wood chips. So I'm gonna take the time just to sweep away the wood chips from where we're gonna be planting the potatoes today. The next thing we need to do to get this bed ready or to plant these potatoes is we need to move all these flowers because this is what we're gonna use on top of our potatoes to plant them. So all I'm gonna do is oh, just set them right down here and tomorrow I'm gonna come out and plant more of these flowers. But I wanna get those potatoes in the ground right now. I'm gonna use this for a knee guard and all we're gonna do to plant these potatoes, we're not doing anything special, we're gonna start with the red potatoes. I'm gonna take my little spade knife here and I'm not even gonna dig, I'm just putting a little divot so they don't roll away. I'm not burying them, I'm not doing anything like that. And I'm gonna plant them about a foot apart from each other. I shouldn't even say planting. All I'm gonna do is set them in the ground about a foot apart from each other. We're gonna do two rows here and we're gonna go all the way down the length of this bed. There are some volunteer potatoes in here. I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm just gonna plant right around them and we'll let them just grow together. This started out as sod two years ago. I put cardboard down, I put grass clippings, I put manure, and I did a no dig method on this whole entire area. And this is just turning into beautiful soil and that's the goal is to continue with that. See, here's a volunteer potato. We're just gonna bury that and let it grow. A volunteer potato is a potato that I did not dig up last year because I just missed it and it overwintered and then it starts to grow on its own. I'm gonna do an experiment one year where I purposely leave potatoes in the ground and see how they do. I definitely have enough potatoes to do a third row. So I'm taking my broom and I'm sweeping the wood chips that were tucked in the corner here because I don't want to plant in wood chips. So I'm gonna get a third row prepped and ready to go for us here. 
I refer to this bed as my Ruth Stout bed. Ruth Stout is a person and you can actually Google Ruth Stout gardening and there's a documentary on her. She is a no fuss, no muss type of gardener and she kind of came up with this method of planting potatoes in straw. Last year I didn't have any straw. I planted my potatoes in leaves and that worked really well but I happen to have this straw because I tried to do straw bill gardening last year <laughs> and so I'm going to do it with straw this year. I think it's going to work a little bit better just because they don't break down quite as fast and you can see there's worms in here. I wanted to show you that this straw just in one year had so many worms in it. It was pretty incredible and pretty shocking to me. So Ruth Stout you can watch her documentary and it's pretty fascinating. I haven't experimented with her method on any other style of gardening, but the potatoes, I think it's gonna work really well this year, especially because I'm gonna be irrigating it this year. I wanna show you how this is basically turning into dirt, or soil, I should say. The straw is just breaking down. It's beautiful. This is great, great stuff. Now that we have that bed done, I'm going to start working on my root bags. I'm really excited about these. I have a ton of different sizes, and like I said, I can link them down below. And this is just the start of what we're gonna be doing in these root bags. So I filled them up with a little bit of potting soil, just whatever you would use in a typical pot. I only filled about four or five inches in each pot. And then in each one of these 15 gallon bags, I'm gonna place four seed potatoes. I am going to kind of triangle stagger them I guess just so that they have a little bit more room and you can see how I left all of this space. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let them grow up after we put more soil on the top. I'll put up another about five inches or so of soil on the top of them. Once they start to grow I'll continue to fill this bag up with soil and we will have hopefully a really good potato harvest out of these bags. The variety of potatoes I'm planting in these root bags are called butterball and they're an indeterminate variety of potato. Just like tomatoes have indeterminate and determinate varieties, so do potatoes. Indeterminate varieties of potatoes will continue to produce fruit along the vine and that's why I'm burying them deep and I'm going to continue to bury them because they'll continue to grow potatoes as long as their roots or the stem is buried. Now that we have our root bags done we're going to prep our bed that we are going to do just like our typical square foot gardening method. The way I plant my potatoes in a raised bed is I plant them one potato per square foot. I'm not measuring or anything I'm just eyeballing it and I'm planting them about 10 or so inches deep. Basically as deep as I can go, that is as deep as I want to plant the potato. I thought it was funny at the beginning of this video, I said that my first year growing potatoes was a record breaking year. It was just the first year I grew potatoes and I thought it was a lot of potatoes. And last year I only relied on the roost out method and I didn't do the in ground square foot gardening method in the raised beds and I regretted it because my raised beds were irrigated and my roost out bed was not irrigated. And now that I have my roost out method beds irrigated, it will be a good side by side comparison to see if one method does better than the other. It's hard to judge two different methods if one is getting a constant stream of water and the other one is not because it's not fair to compare the two. That is one 16 by four foot bed planted out in potatoes. Now I still have a lot of potatoes to plant. I've got two whole bags and this bag. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do something pretty interesting, I think. Since I have this space here, and once potatoes start growing, you don't need to tend to them. They're an easy crop. You just put them in the ground, let them do their thing until it's time to harvest. So I could have a huge long bed. I don't need a nice walkway or anything around them. I'm just going to continue to build this out and cover in straw. So even less work than I did before because I'm getting tired because it's late. All I'm going to do is set my potato on the ground. <laughs> I don't have the energy to even dig it a little bit. Now this is real 
true roast stout gardening because she was all about no fuss, no muss. She even just threw them on the ground. Eventually, we might even go farther out this way, but I have to start moving more of this straw in order to make room. Because that only used one of the three bags of potatoes we have. Break it up a little bit. Throw it over these potatoes. There's a lot of moisture held in this straw because it's rained for the last week. So I'm not gonna water these potatoes. I might water them tomorrow. Now we're on to a new project. I actually did this before I planted the potatoes, but it was so loud. We, Josh was mowing our lawn, our neighbors were mowing their lawn, and we had all of that snow and it broke so many branches in our neighborhood and trees. And so people are chainsawing and wood chipping. So we are gonna go ahead and get this project taken care of together now, but it was very loud out here. So what I'm doing is I am prepping the area where I am gonna be growing all, well not all, but quite a few of our tomatoes, kind of like the main tomato crop. And I have three T posts in the ground and I'm using this stool that I got as my jig, my guideline, so that I can know how high I want all of them. We're gonna attach the T posts to our cattle panels. These are cattle panels with these little metal brackets and I'm gonna use this little tool. This tool is a tool that you cannot find at my local uh, feed stores where you buy the cattle panels and T posts. Josh came out and informed me that I put the T-posts in all opposite directions. You need your T-posts going in all the same way so that you can attach your cattle panel. So he graciously came out and helped me completely put up all of these three trellises and it was super, super helpful. I'm gonna show you how you use this little tool in order to put the brackets on the T-posts. Last year, in order to attach my cattle panels to my T-posts, I used zip ties. And I did not look for UV ray protection zip ties or anything like that, I just used zip ties. And what happened was some of the zip ties broke down in the sunlight and I had a couple of my trellises fall over. So this is gonna be a huge upgrade to use these little metal brackets. And I will link that little tool because we had to buy it on Amazon because it was the only place we could find it. So Josh helped me set up the trellises and I'm so excited about this. This is gonna be a really, really good addition to the garden. I love growing my tomatoes on these trellises because it just is so easy to weave your tomatoes in and out of them. After Josh was done helping me, I decided to take down this trellis. I grew tomatoes over here last year and I wasn't really happy with this kind of like right smack dab in the front of my garden because it kind of created a barrier and this just really opens the garden back up. This trellis I went ahead and I did by myself which was no problem after Josh came out and helped me with two of them. It was a lot easier because I kind of had some good tips and tricks on how to get these trellises up. This is a very affordable way to also trellis your tomatoes. These cattle panels are, I want to say I spent $32 on them this year. They are a little bit more this year than they were last year, but overall a very affordable way to trellis tomatoes. So I now have five trellises for tomatoes and tomatillos and they grew fantastic here last year. So I'm super excited about this progress. And now that I'm done, everyone's doing mowing their lawns, weed whacking and doing all the things so I can talk to you again. So we got this bed done. Well, I shouldn't say that. I think what I'm gonna do, because I still have two bags of potatoes, I'm gonna extend this to about right, right there. I have plenty of straw to do that. We still need to finish planting all these pots. That's for another day. We got our grow bags set up. We got our bed planted. We got ready for our potatoes, tomatoes. I'm tired. I'm dirty, I'm thirsty. Josh did bring me a nice tea, and I haven't had very much of it, so I need to drink some. I'm out of breath.
It is such a workout. Man, squatting up and down. It's my favorite kind of workout. This or dancing, the only type of workout I really want to do. I'm so happy. What a productive afternoon. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside. I'm going to clean up. And we are going to make some pound cake. I love pound cake. It's my favorite kind of cake. Because I don't like frosting. I don't know if you know. I hate frosting. Pound cake doesn't have frosting on it. It just has really dense cake, which is what I like. So let me bring all my stuff inside. Let's go make a cake. I changed my mind. I'm gonna water the grow bags because there was no moisture in this soil as opposed to this has a ton of moisture in it. Before I go inside and we make the cake, I wanted to show you something I have outside. I'm starting to harden off all of the things we started inside. All of these are tomatoes and peppers and flowers. And let me show you something super exciting. Now what hardening off means is you just start bringing your plants outside. You get them used to some UV actual sunlight. If you take them from inside from artificial light and you put them in the garden, when they get in front of the sun, they'll get sunburned. So some of these things need a little bit of water. And some things I know I already started too soon. My tomatillos are all flowering, so I've been picking off the flowers. Can you see all that? So that's not great because I started these way too soon. They're not going to produce any fruit because they're mostly inside right now. They're going to be coming outside very, very soon. Also, my tomatoes, I started too soon. You can see how tall they are. My peppers, I started right on time. I, I'm going to start my peppers next year at the exact same time. But what I'm going to do with the tomatoes and my tomatillos is I'm going to start them probably two or three weeks later than I did this year. I am still so new to gardening. That was something I didn't realize. I assumed you should start both your tomatoes and peppers at the same time. Peppers are a much slower growing vegetable <laughs> or plant, I should say. Now this is something super exciting. This is the ginger we started together. Every single one of my pots that we started the ginger have ginger plants growing out of them. So these are all out here. Some of them, like that one looks like it needs a little bit of water. That one definitely needs a little bit of water. Those are peppers. We have some of our flowers. This is some more celery. We have, these are straw flowers in here. And then we have our different echinaceas. These ones are really slow to start. And uh, though this needs water. I hope I didn't kill that. I may have killed those, but those were from earlier. So I'm gonna water these. I'm gonna go inside and shower. I love making pound cake because it's the easiest cake to make. It has six ingredients. It has butter, flour, eggs, salt, and vanilla. Hi boys. Josh, can you call the dogs please? So I have one cup of butter in my mixer. I'm gonna add two cups of sugar. Oh, I need to preheat my oven to 350. I probably am not even gonna have my oven preheated by the time we get this cake made. That's how fast it comes together. And I'm gonna cream this, whoop, making a mess. I'm gonna cream this together until it's light and fluffy. Then I'm gonna add six eggs, one at a time. ingredient is just two cups of all-purpose flour. Pound cake gets its name from originally having a pound of flour, a pound of sugar, and a pound of butter. But I don't know if this is a pound each now. I don't, I don't think so, but I don't know. Oop! Making a mess. So this came together in the time it took my oven to get to 160 degrees. It didn't even take me five minutes to whip together a homemade pound cake. I'm just gonna scrape the sides a little bit, mix it one more time, and then we're gonna get it into a bundt pan. Mm, I love it so much. This cake reminds me of summer. Pound cake and summer just go hand in hand, especially with strawberries. Spray my bundt pan really, really well. I don't want it to stick. That's a new spray and it's not spraying very evenly. 
So I'm gonna take a pastry brush and I'm just gonna wipe this everywhere just so that we have an even coating that our pound cake doesn't stick. Hope I don't have too much oil on the bottom of this. <laughs> Shoot, it's kind of pooling. Oh well, it's gonna taste good. This is grass-fed butter and you can see how yellow this cake is from the butter and from the homegrown eggs. It's just absolutely stunning. If you're asking why do I have croutons or bread on a cutting board in my oven is because I was tired of looking at it on my counter because I was letting these dry so that I could make them into croutons. So I store them in my oven, which is so silly. Ugh! I just wanted them out of sight, out of mind. Darn it. Well, that cutting board is toast. Any longer, that would be melting all over my oven. Thankfully, I caught it in time. It's not melting in my oven or melting over my oven at all. It wasn't even on the racks. Ugh, that's just typical me. <laughs> now I am going to start prepping the strawberries. I washed these just in their cells so I didn't have to get a colander out. I'm glad I'm getting to them because that one has a little bad spot on it. Dry them down. Local strawberries are my favorite fruit of all time and they are usually ripe in very, very late May, early June. These are not local strawberries, these are from the grocery store. But what I do then, when strawberries are in season, I eat my weight in them until I'm sick of them. And then I typically don't very often buy strawberries from the grocery store because they're, they're just not as good as the local ones. I know I'm cutting a little bit more off the tops than I need to, but I'm gonna give them to my chickens so it'll be a nice treat since there's definitely some kind of softer spots towards the top. I'm gonna put my strawberries in this bowl. And we're gonna do what's called macerate the berries. That's just a fancy term for you put a little bit of sugar, that's about two tablespoons, on the berries and you let that sugar draw out the juices of the strawberries or whatever fruit you're macerating. These are gonna go in the refrigerator. I have my oven set for 60 minutes on the pound cake. Pound cake takes a long time, it's very dense. So I wouldn't be surprised if it takes a little bit longer because my oven tends to run a little bit cool. Josh just came down so we're gonna bring those plants back inside and I'll show you what that cake looks like when it comes out of the oven. Not even near done, but it's getting kind of dark on the side, so I kind of worry about that. I wonder, looks a little bit interesting. I let the cake cook for another five minutes or so. I'm gonna let it cool for 10 minutes and then we're gonna flip this out of the bundt pan. I can't get this cake out of the pan, so I have a plastic fork and I'm running it underneath the cake until it kind of goes all the way through. And we're gonna just cross our fingers that this is what it's gonna take to get this cake out of this pan. I probably should have greased and floured this pan, but I didn't want to and I never do. I never have a problem with it. Oh, and today was my day to have a problem. So here's the moment of truth. I heard a noise. It sounded like the whole thing came off. Woohoo! And the top's not completely destroyed. I thought with my fork, I was gonna completely mess up the top, but it looks really good. We're gonna let that cake cool. I'll wrap it up in saran wrap. And then tomorrow on our way to the party, I'll pick up some whipped cream and we have the strawberry. So it's gonna be a delicious kind of first summery type dessert. I'm looking forward to it. So thank you guys for hanging out with me today in the garden. It was busy, I'm tired. I love being tired after working in the garden. It just feels like a really productive tired. I'm gonna sleep well tonight. Tomorrow, we're gonna be out there again. We are actually gonna do a spring clean on the patio. We're gonna pressure wash. We're gonna make breakfast together and we might get some more seeds in the ground. I kind of want to get my black beans and green beans planted. So we'll cross our fingers. Hopefully we get to that for right now. I'm gonna get a glass of 
No, I think I'm gonna get a carbonated water. I'm gonna go watch some TV with Josh and I'm gonna go to bed because we're getting up early tomorrow to be productive. Josh is gonna help me with the spring cleaning, so it's gonna be fun. So thank you guys for hanging out with me today. Hope you guys are having a great day. If you wanna watch more of my videos, I'll put some videos right up here. You can go enjoy those between now and my next upload. I wanna say thank you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me and I can't wait to see you guys next time. Bye guys.